ecological pyramid work. So a pyramid has at the base of it the, um, the first trophic level. So plants are at the base of this uh, pyramid. And so what they do by making a pyramid, they represent the trophic level in number or size. So this block, see, is very big because there's a lot of, say, plants at the first level of the food chain. So these might be plants. And um, this is, you know, trophic level one. And so it's very, very big. And um, as you go up through the food chain, it becomes much smaller. Because like I said yesterday, so what might eat plants according to our food chain? Did you make a, make a food chain? I did. Hi. Good morning. I love this food chain. This is awesome. Can you put the rest back or do you still have the thing? Did I take it? Yeah, I think so. Put it Okay, so let's say plants here are at the bottom of the food chain. And then, as plants get eaten, in this case, they're eaten by mice. Mice will eat just about anything. Um, the, uh, maybe they're eating the seeds of the plants. They probably aren't eating the leaves. They're eating the seeds or nuts, or if the plant dies, you know, they can maybe eat some of the decomposed stuff. But, um, uh, mice love to eat grains and things. So the mice eat the plants, but how many mice are there? Well, there's a lot less than the number of plants. Because as the mice eat the plants, the mice are using energy in their everyday activities. So they're burning up a lot of the food that they eat. They're burning those calories. The excess is always lost as heat when you ever see a, a, an ecological pyramid. So you don't have as many mice as you do plants. And so as we go up in the chain here, there's a much smaller number at each level. So here's we made it a little bigger, snakes, and then I'm to the side here and then birds at the top, and it just gets smaller and smaller with each level that you go up. Um, there's fewer and fewer organisms. So there, there's just a, a few of the fourth level in an area, um, and that's why it looks like a pyramid, because it's big at the bottom and it gets smaller as you go up. Ecological pyramid. Have you ever heard of this before? Yeah. <clears throat> So there can be different types of pyramids. You can have a pyramid of biomass. That's where you actually go out and you weigh. You weigh the number of plants. And it's usually measured per square meter. So have you seen these big green blocks on the floor? Mm -hmm. That's about a square meter. It's a little bit bigger, but anyway. Square meter is kind of like an area here. And you could weigh the number of plants per square meter in an, in an area, right? And that would give you the, um, they have it here in, in grams per square meter. So there's 809 grams of plant mass in one square meter of area. How many grams of insects that eat the plants are there? Well, there's 37 per square meter. So if you weigh, you'd have have eight, what was it again? 809 plants, I think, grams, and only 37 grams of insects. Um, so as you go up, you can see those numbers get less. Now, the rule of thumb is every step up, you lose about 90% of your energy, or 90% of your mass, or 90% of your numbers if you're doing a pyramid of numbers. Here's a pyramid of numbers right here. If you counted the number of grass plants, and they're not doing it per meter here, they're doing it per hectare. Do you know how big a hectare is? Hundred acres. I don't even know how big a hectare is. Anyone know? Big seven. Google how big is a hectare. Big seven. Oh my gosh. I mean, is this building a hectare's worth of area? A million and a half grass plants. One hundred seven thousand six hundred thirty-nine square feet. 
I'm not going to give you the equation for this. I'm going to see if you can figure it out just, just thinking about it. How efficient are these organisms? Let's use the uh, let's use um, these two levels here. How efficient are insects or snails at transferring energy from this level to that level? In other words, if they transferred, if they got 100% of the energy transferred, then this block would be the same size as this block. You see what I'm saying? So how can you figure out the transfer efficiency there? Did you have your hand up? You're going to answer. Well, well, I mean, it looks like it's like 30 to 40 percent. It looks like 30 to 40 percent. You just got that in, in your in your head. How did you do that? I'm just looking at the bars. Look, looking at the size of the bars. Yeah. How can we do it mathematically if we wanted to calculate a number? So you take, take, give me the numbers again. 20,368, 20, 20,810, so that equal to 2100. But if you took 30, 3368 and divided it by 2810, you could figure out a percentage. You have to, you have to multiply that by 100 to get the percent. So can, does anyone have a calculator? Do 3368 divided by 2810. I'm saying that goes about 6, 1, 6. So you're talking about 18, 17%? 16.2. So um, that divided by that will give you 0 0.16, 0 0.162. Then you multiply it by 100, and you get 16.2%. So 16% of the energy that was in the plant is now in the insects. Do you see how to calculate that? This is something they could give you on the AP exam, and it's not on the formula sheet. You just got to kind of figure out how to do it in your head. What's the efficiency of the transfer from one level to another? You know? If you have, if you have a bunch of stuff that you got to move, What's your efficiency of moving it? It's how much stuff you can pick up out of the total amount that there are and take it to somewhere else. So that tells you your efficiency. If you can pick them all up and take them, you're 100% efficient. If you can only pick up a third of them and take them, you're 33% of efficient. So here's this transfer efficiency. It looks to be about 16%. So do me a favor now, now that I told you how to do that. Everybody try to figure out using uh, your calculator and your brain to transfer efficiency from level two to level three there, from here to here. Do it. David, use, use something to do it. You can use your calculator on your computer. Write it down on something and show me when I come around, because I know in my head, I know about what it is, based on state championship math team and That. Pretty right. Doing from the second level to the third level, from insects to fish. Yep. From the blue to the red on the bottom there, Silver Spring, Florida. Yes. Got anything? Yes. Yes. Got anything? You just showed me. Yes. Heck yeah, you got it. Woo. So we got 33.68 of insects and 3.83 of fish. You figure out transfer efficiency? Did I get everybody? Did I get you? You looked at it. I did. Did you get it? Anyone else? That I didn't get? So you just do 3.83 divided by 33.68 times 100. 
there a general rule of thumb that it's about 10%? Or is that it should be about 10%. Usually about 10%. But that's sometimes, some ecosystems are more efficient than others. So this, this transfer was 16%, and that was 11. And just looking from, from here to here, it looks only like about 6% or so. That's a good question. That sounds like a master's thesis. That's a great question. I don't know. Um, where is it? Does it have desert on here? It doesn't. Let's talk real quick about um, biological magnification. So, as you go up through a food chain, what did I do with my DDT that you got me? As you go up through a food chain, have you ever heard the story of DDT? Yep. Yes. They came up with a with a pesticide in the 1960s that was so good at killing insects, there's never been a better chemical made. It was called DDT. And they sprayed it all around and it killed insects dead. And it was, it was really good because it could stay in an area and the insects wouldn't come back to it. It, it, it stayed in the area for a long time. Um, as a matter of fact, DDT that was sprayed on a field 50 years ago is still there today. That's how potent this chemical is. Well, they found out that these DDT molecules, being ever-present where they don't really disappear from the environment, they, they would get into, like, if they spray it on a bunch of plants, they'd kind of lay, sit on the plants and sit on the ground and just kind of stay there. And then, like, when, this mice, when these mice eat these plants, all of the DDT, you see, gets up into those mice's bodies. And then, um, like we said, there's fewer at each level. So there's fewer snakes. And so all these DDT gets up into the snakes. And then there's only a few hawks at the very top of the chain. And, and all this DDT was getting into their bodies. And when you spray it on the plants, each plant didn't have a whole lot of DDT. But when you go through this biological magnification process, when one thing eats another, the, the, uh, the, the chemicals kind of concentrate and they get concentrated at each level you get about 10 times as much chemical at each level so the the you might have a spray at just you know very small amount here but 10 times that and 10 times that and 10 times that at the top of a five or six step food chain you've got the chemical is a million times as concentrated as what you sprayed it and that was enough where bald eagle eggs, the shell, the DDT causes the shells that were laid by the moms to be too thin. And when the mother would sit on the egg, it would crack the shells. The babies were, were dying. And all of a sudden, scientists out there that were kind of bird watchers or keeping track were noticing that there were a lot fewer bald eagles. We almost killed the bald eagle in the United States from this chemical. It's at the top of the food chain, so it was one of the ones that was most affected by this. And so, uh, so that was a very, well, once, once we figured that out, we banned DDT. And part of the reason why it works so well is because it's so persistent in the environment. That was part of the reason it's causing problems, because it stayed in the ecosystem and worked its way up. That's called biological magnification. And, um, Nowadays, if you're going to make a pesticide or something, you have to make it where it's not persistent in the environment, where it, it won't last. And you have to test it at, at, at levels like a million times at what you're going to spray it at to make sure it's not, it's not deadly to organisms. Isn't that interesting? Hey, we saved the bald eagle. We got two of them living over at the Brunswick Country Club. They're beautiful. So uh, at least we, we dodged that bullet. <laughs>